Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my Steven Universe Fusion series. I have four brand new fusions for you today and I'm really excited for you to see. Just wanted to say thank you so much for all your sweet and lovely comments on my last video. Some of those comments directly affected the pieces in here today. I'm so happy to say that the last video did end up doing significantly better than I expected and that it's truly all thanks to you guys and I can continue this series. Also, thanks to all the new subscribers, because of you I have reached a thousand subs! It happens so quickly too. I appreciate every last one of you and be sure to leave comments for future video ideas of what you would like to see. I absolutely love reading all your comments and interacting with all of you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell as well. Okay, let's get into the new fusions! For our first fusion today, we have a gem called Azurite, and I chose this gem because of the extremely rich, like, saturated blue in this gem, as well as the bright pops of, like, tealy green. I thought it would be the perfect gem for them, um, because lapis lazulis are, they're not transparent, they're matte, and I thought that um, this Azurite with these bright pops of green would be a perfect blend of the two gems. Um, for my first rendition, I tried making this like cold, calculating, receptionist kind of angle because lapis lazuli can be a little bit on the cold side, but I ultimately wasn't really feeling very much of the peridot or lapis lazuli. So for my second rendition, I, I had in my mind this idea of these like teal triangular sleeves that contain their double arm, uh, but I really wasn't thinking that these colors were really looking that good together. Her skin is already so much, so it was kind of hard to come up with a clothing color scheme. I even thought of just putting her in completely black. I tried this kind of like navy outfit with the white skirt and green shoes. So the green shoes are a reference to Peridot's bright yellow shoes and Lapis Lazuli's lacquer shoes. So the cuts in the shoes are reference to Lapis Lazuli's exposed toes, for example, and the bright green color is a reference to Peridot's yellow socks <laughs> look at things. For this one, I just felt like the white skirt really wasn't working that well. It was kind of like popping in a bad way. So I moved on to take away the skirt entirely, which was really hard to convince myself to do. But I just felt like there was already a lot of triangle shape going on already with this base outfit. So I made it all this dark teal color, but I really was feeling like it was looking too much like Malachite's teal. And I don't want to reference Malachite at all because these two are, are more balanced, significantly more balanced than Malachite. And so I lightened up the teal, but I was still sealing these uh, Malachite colors. I ultimately decided that the teal sleeves weren't really working. Um, I decided to split her outfit in half. I thought I would hate this idea, but it actually ended up working out really well. And I just lightened up the colors and made the boots bright yellow, gave her um, Peridot's little stars, and I also lightened up their hair a little bit. I tried to make them as alien as I could while as still maintaining this like cute receptionist vibe. But yeah, I really love how they turned out. They look super sweet and super willing to help. And I thought that the willingness to help would be the Peridot side and perhaps Azurite can have this sassy side and that's her lapis lazuli half. <laughs> So this is the final design for Azurite. Um, I think she turned out extremely cute. Her personality would be that she's very quirky, very nice, very approachable, wants to help. But I do think that she has a bit of a sassy side if you rub her the wrong way. <laughs> I gave her a halo and I think she uses this to float around, but that's up to you if you like that idea. Um, I added lots of sparkles as usual because I absolutely love them. I actually thought this would turn out a lot worse than it did, so I'm really happy that it ended up so cute. Um, I hope that the Lapidot fans are satisfied with this one. I see a lot of designs where she's like a teal girl, so I wanted to go my own direction, so I hope this makes you happy. But I think that's about it for this fusion, so let's move on to the next fusion. So for our second fusion today, we have a gem called Kunzite, and yes, she is a redesign of the canon Smoky Quartz fusion between Steven and Amethyst. 
Um, don't be up in arms. I absolutely love Smoky Quartz and I've seen some absolutely adorable cosplays with her. I just feel like the design lacks a lot of fluidity and cohesiveness. There's a lot of starting and stopping when you look at her design and I don't feel like these colors are working at all. I just want you to know that by no means do I think that she's a bad design. So I was just aiming for more flow, essentially. Uh, my first edition was really just a smushing of both Amethyst and Steven and um, I felt like it was a little too direct and I wasn't liking the colors and then I think I swiftly figured out why Smoky Quartz has short hair. It's because when she has long hair she looks a lot like Rose Quartz and we don't want that. Um, so I was determined to make the round hair work. I did another rendition but yeah. She looked exactly like Rose Quartz, like identical. Um, so I, I did it just one more time. This design did not give me nearly as much trouble as the Lapis Lazuli and Peridot Fusion. Yeah, so really I just gave her more of a steven -y face with his thick eyebrows and I gave, and I love this idea because I really wasn't thinking I was gonna go this direction, but I gave them a like an ombre in their hair um, to signify that Steven's black hair has affected the hair, but it hasn't completely consumed all of the hair. And I just kind of made it like a big giant circle, almost like she looks like Lulu from Pokemon. And I absolutely love how this design came out. I think they're actually very cute and pretty together. Um, I, yeah, so she's just more round and her outfit's colors are more cohesive. I do change the color of Steven's shirt, but it's still in the pink realm or red realm. Um, so you can tell that it's his clothes. The color palette is just more cohesive and more flowing. Their weapon gave me a lot of trouble. It was really, really complicated and there were many parts to coloring it. And the thing I wanted to say was that the reason why I chose the Kunze instead of the Smoky Quartz and instead of Johnny Marie design is because I don't understand why Steven can't have pink gems like for his fusions. I feel like Rebecca Sugar or whoever was in charge of choosing the gem for the fusion maybe felt that a bunch of pink gems, pink and purple gems, would be repetitive. And I totally understand that, but now that I've made these fusions, I realize that pink, purple, and maybe white, all those colors have a lot of spectrum. Um, so it's actually very possible to make a pink fusion for Steven, and I am determined to make all of his gems choice is pink and the the resulting fusions are also pink and I think it's important because he's a pink diamond you know spoilers I guess so yeah and I recognize that I did complain that their outfit is literally just Amethyst's and Steven's um, clothes together but I ended up giving them the Steven sandals and I actually really ended up liking that choice better than just going with I don't understand why they give Amethyst these like basic ass peasant boots but I don't like the boots so I kept the sandals and I think that they're very cute but anyway, um, I'll see you guys in the conclusion. So there is the final product for our Steven and Amethyst Fusion Kunzite. Um, this one ended up being a lot more complicated than I had thought. The decoration on the weapon and the gems on the weapon string and the the gems themselves on Kunze and her shirt and making sure that the star is relatively symmetrical um yeah this was just way more time consuming than i had thought let me know how you feel about the circular shape of this one um and i guess the more pronounced belly of this one i just feel like it has more flow and more energy um than the canon design but i know a lot of people love smoky quartz so by no means do i think that this is necessarily an improvement it's very much subjective um but i gotta say i love the ombre in the hair i think it's very cute and um yeah i guess that's all i have to say about this one um same power same weapon just a different aesthetic uh let's move on to the next fusion 
For our third fusion today, we have a gem called Rhodochrosite, the fusion between Jasper and Steven. I recorded this footage with a different recording system. This way will be used in the future. I just recorded the other fusions the old way, so we'll just have to use the footage we have for now. Rhodochrosite is an interesting gem because on certain cuts it can kind of look like meat, which I think is appropriate for their fusion because it's very muscular and bulky. Also, this gem has uh, some banding, which is reminiscent of Jasper's stripes, and it's this kind of salmony orangey color that I think would be a perfect color when you combine Jasper's gem and Steven's gem. Their fusion absolutely gave me the most trouble in terms of concept. Uh, because their personalities are so different, I really wasn't sure which direction to go for their personality. So without like an understanding of where to go, I had a really hard time in just the concept stage. Um, I wanted to make them strong, but has a belly kind of physique. Um, but I was actually realizing midway through that there's a lot of possibility for this gem to be quite ugly. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude, it's just how do I make this gem like something I would like to draw and still be like look like Steven and Jasper enough? Um, when I got to this kind of emo one, I thought it would be a great idea to make them an emo teen, but I realized that it's quite ugly, <laughs> especially with all this speckling everywhere. I don't think that is very flattering at all. Um, uh, this one's significant because this is the one where I decided that I wanted to have maybe some hair in the front. I kind of tried to imply more of Jasper's physique in this one. Um, with her kind of like hourglass figure, but it was just like looking like way too tall and just like weird. <laughs> I ended up with this one where they have more of a mullet. It, like at the end of the day, I think about what do I want to spend time on and this is not it. <laughs> um, and then I finally got to the last one here. In this one, I was like, oh yeah, Jasper's a fighter, so I should make them a fighter. And I kind of gave them like fisty like wraps and I kind of thought that they're like a shitty little fighter or like a little scrappy little kid that gets into fights, you know? And I absolutely adore this personality for them. I think outwardly they might be a bit of a jerk, but I think inwardly they have a heart of gold <laughs> and they do want to help. I think that their fusion would be a little more on the unstable side. I gave them fangs and many arms. Um, so despite the fact that they're strong, I don't think that their fusion could last very long in a battle. And once again, I made Stephen's shirt more harmonious with the color palette, so I made these purple pants and orange shirt, and I think that it actually turned out really great. I feel like I can see the Stephen and Jasper influence in this design when I look at it, and that makes me extremely happy. Let's talk about it more in the conclusion. So there we have the final design for Rotochrosite. I added sparkles as usual. Um, I really do love how this one came out. Um, it's really fascinating to see this one beside Kunzite. Um, I really like their hair. I really think it's flowing in a very satisfying way. And I really like how their gems turned out and this like pop of orange on his shirt and shoes and these dark purple pants. And yeah, I'm so happy that I was able to find a balance between Jasper and Steven's personalities enough that I feel like I can see both of them here. They would be an extremely strong fusion, but one that probably couldn't exist for very long at any given time. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this fusion. Let's move on to the last fusion of the video. For our final fusion today, we have the fusion between Garnet and Peridot. I absolutely love this one. Her name is Fallerite, and she is the Garnet fusion for the video. The concept process uh, took a little bit, but it didn't take nearly as long as the Rotochrosite process. I started with this bug motif because I felt that their hairs combined would make a honeycomb shape and so I thought like oh it'd be kind of fun if they had a bug motif going on. I wasn't fully satisfied with this direction so I decided to take another crack at it. Um, in this one I experimented much 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 more. I extended the edges of Garnet's hair and it kind of made me have this idea of like what if their hair was a plasma screen TV 
And I know that's a weird idea and it's okay if you don't like this design, if you feel it's a little um, out there. But I just felt like I want Peridot's fusions to be as alien as they possibly can make them. Somebody left a comment with the suggestion that because Garnet and Peridot both have visors, that they, their visors should combine into one large face covering visor. And with that in the hair, I kind of thought like, wouldn't it be really cool if they were a plasma screen TV and their hair was TV shaped? <laughs> and I know that it's weird making their fusion kind of robotic. In one of the comments they had mentioned their ability to cool and heat something to whatever degree they would like and with her peridot arms she can finely tune anything she would like to any shape that she needs it to be and the extensions on her arms can be any tool she needs so she's a very helpful builder is the concept here. I asked family about it and he said that he isn't really fond of all the limbs being separate and in this next rendition I kept the body all as one whole with the arms being kind of this plasma energy um, and I really did like it but the expression wasn't really quite there um, and it was really out there and not something that I think the show would necessarily do. I gave it one more go and gave her more of a Steven Universe appropriate face. I wanted Peridot's eyes to be the more prominent eyes in this one. I kind of thought with this fusion, Garnet and Peridot are working together in the sense that Garnet is kind of just letting Peridot enjoy being a fusion for the first time with someone she really, really trusts. And so she's kind of given Peridot the reins. So this one is very Peridot prominent in personality. And I still kind of made her look like a robot, but also with the proportions of maybe more of a typical body. And I absolutely love how this one came out. And yeah, the concept art wasn't a terrible hassle, as opposed to rotocrocytes. And so I'm just so happy with the concept of this one, and I absolutely love Spallerite. Um, they're very helpful, very quirky, and very much eccentric. <laughs> Um, and they kind of look like a giant robot walking around. I was still able to incorporate the brown color, it's just kind of subtle in the sense that it looks more close to black. I love that they look like a giant computer that's willing to help build anybody, anything they need. And this was kind of decided in the line art, I kind of decided to give her jet shoes that um, are very much this like really large triangle shape. And I thought it added so much to the fusion, like that wasn't really part of the concept art, that was kind of improvised and I just, I, I guys, I love this fusion. Like I absolutely love Spallerite. If I ever got the chance to start animating, I might animate her doing something subtle. And I kind of just went for a green and red color palette, the red's referencing Garnet and the green's of course representing Peridot. Um, and I kept the outfit a little more subtle so that it wasn't overly complicated. However, this fusion isn't super tall and I wouldn't even imagine it's like super mighty or anything. I think it's more of a helper instead of a fighter necessarily. I love how Garnet's stripes on her heel like leads your eye to the jets on her feet. I love this you guys, like I absolutely love this fusion. I hope you love Spallerite too and we could talk about her more in the conclusion. So this is the final Spallerite design, you guys. I love that she looks kind of astronaut -y and friendly, but a little strange. I'm swiftly realizing that Peridot fusions are the best fusions, and it's really hard for me to say no to making a Peridot fusion. <laughs> I love how her gems turned out. I really loved doing them. Garden's gems are so beautiful. And I really like the pose I put her in because it allows you to see the whole figure without the image itself being too vertical. <laughs> I love how kind of odd she is, but still very cute, and she's absolutely my favorite. I don't think I have much else to add at the moment, so I think we'll wrap it up for now and get to the end of our video here. Just before you go, I made something a little extra for this video. I wanted to make some silhouettes of the main gems and their fusions so I can illustrate all of their heights, so I made this height chart of the fusions especially. I will be adding more to this because I had way more fun with this than I thought I would. So yeah. Fire Opal is just a little taller than Sardonyx, which I think makes sense because Jasper is just a little taller than Garnet, but Fire Opal is still significantly shorter than Zucculite. I want Mukaite to be as tall as a canyon cliffside, so she's just a little taller than Malachite. Hyalite Opal is just a little taller than Garnet, but not taller than Jasper. Taffyite is taller than Opal, but not taller than Sardonyx. Azurite is not very tall and is shorter than Garnet, but taller than Pearl. 
Kunzite is just a wee bit taller than Jasper, but shorter than Opal. Rhodochrosite is just a bit shorter than Sardonyx. And Sphalerite is the shortest three gem fusion, and she is a little taller than Opal, but short when beside Sardonyx. <laughs> you have no idea how much fun I had making this chart. <laughs> Anywho, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you liked this batch of fusion. This batch was much harder, I would say, than my last, in that my last were all pretty much designed already, but for this one I had to come up with four new designs, characters, and personalities that correlated with the canon characters. But I literally love how these fusions turned out, especially Spallerite. Perhaps next time I'll make it so there's only one Steven fusion per video. I'm still going to see if I can get some last minute Magical Girl content on this channel. I'm not sure how many people think Steven Universe is a Magical Girl show. I don't consider it a Magical Girl show myself, but I feel like it comes pretty damn close if I do say so myself. <laughs> I think it counts enough. But with that, I think that's all for now. Please enjoy the rest of Magical Girl May, and I'll see you guys in the next one.